Hello everyone. So welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I will be explaining to you all about the third part of our ninth unit, life. This is gonna be the last part of our this lesson. So now let us all start off with this lesson. So under this third part, we are going to discuss about curved images. The images formed by curved mirrors is what we will be discussing about in this third part. So now you know that there are different types of mirrors all over this world. One such type of mirrors are curved. When you see them, you will notice that they are curved in nature. Now, those curved mirrors can be divided into two main categories as convex mirrors and concave mirrors. So now, when you consider concave mirrors and convex mirrors, how do you differentiate between them? How do you identify a concave mirror from a convex mirror. It's very simple. You all have to look at the reflecting surface of those mirrors. Now, if the reflecting surface is bent or curved inwards like such, as you can see in this figure, if the curved if the reflecting surface is curved inwards, that means such a mirror is a concave mirror. If the reflecting surface is bent inwards, it is a concave mirror. If the reflecting surface is bent outwards like such, it is a convex mirror. So now, as mentioned in the previous videos, these spikes sort of things that is drawn behind these mirrors are the mercury layers and they do not reflect light. This front part is the portion that is shining and reflects light. Okay, so now moving on, we, are, we have to understand how to draw these rays of light. So normally, when you are to draw a ray of light, one ray of light is denoted as such with one straight line and an arrow head. When you are to draw a parallel beam of light, you should draw several straight lines along with arrow heads pointing towards the same direction. This will form a parallel beam of light. So, a beam of light is basically a collection of rays of light. Now, is diverged beams of light, the other is converged beams of light. When considering diverged beams of light, light beams, they all are spread from one point to another as such. Then considering converged beams of light, the light be rays that were diverged at initial are being brought together at one point as you can see in this figure. So diverged beams of light are the beams of light in which light rays, all the light rays are being diverged and converged beams of light are the light rays in which are the beams of light in which light rays get converged to one point when they get collected to one point here light rays are divided here light rays are collected to one point okay so now moving on we are going to see or study more about concave mirrors to do this, we are going to perform an activity, that is activity 9.11. So, our aim is going to be to see what happens 
when a narrow parallel beam of light falls on a concave mirror. So to do this practical, you will need a concave mirror like such and a plane mirror. Okay. So then you are going to take um, like this plane mirror and also a concave mirror. Okay. And you can use a laser torch or anything you like. And you are going to direct a parallel beam of light on the reflecting surface of these mirrors. So you can use a normal torch or two or three um, laser lights, anything you wish. Then you will be able to observe that um, the parallel beams of light get collected to one spot like this. If you put a beam of light from here, if you put another beam from here, they both will get connected or they both will cross paths at this specific point, both the light beams. Or even you may use some light rays if you wish. Then you must understand that this over here is a conversion of light. Light is converged here. So as per the conclusion, you can understand that light is converged through mirrors such as these. So now, what is convergence of light? We should understand that the textbook itself has given us a clear definition for this. Understanding this concept and knowing this definition is very important. So, collection of a parallel light beam to a single point from the front of a mirror is known as convergence of light. Okay? So, I hope you all got that point. It's so clear if you didn't understand anything up to this point. You are free. Please do drop a comment. And furthermore, I have made a certain WhatsApp group for all of you guys. If you all want, you all can join it. I will be putting the um, link to my WhatsApp group to the description below. Okay, guys. If you all want, if you all have any questions, if you all want um, extra classes or anything you all can always speak to me and drop me a text okay guys so anyway moving on activity 9.12 here we are going to see what happens when a narrow parallel beam of light falls on a convex mirror a convex mirror so first we discussed about concave mirror no. So now here we are going to see what happens when we do the same practical but with a convex mirror. So like we did in the previous practical, you are going to take a convex mirror. You can even do it with anything else but convex mirror is much better. Then you direct some beams of light towards it, some narrow beams of light towards it. And then you will observe that light rays get diverged, they spread out, they are not gathering in one place. This is what happens with a convex mirror. Light gets diverged. So now, the definition for this is as follows. Spread out of light after reflection is known as divergence of light. So, if light spreads after, during reflection, then light is diverged. Okay. So, now, we are going to perform a new activity to identify about the images. What are the nature, what is the nature of the images formed by concave mirrors? So, we are going to need... Um, a concave mirror like such and of course a mirror holder a candle and a meter ruler so we are going to light our candle and place it on point A we are going to place the candle first over here okay we are going to light the candle and place the candle first over here in front of the mirror so now uh, we must understand that this distance between the mirror and the candle should be quite close. 
Now then, we are going to try to observe this image in the mirror. Then, we try to get it onto a screen. So, it's useless putting one in the back. So, we'll try to screen it in the front. You can place a white sheet of anything and see if you can get it screened on some side. So, we are going to observe the nature of the image with the assistance of our teachers. So normally you must get the assistance of your teachers when doing this practical. Um, you could even take your assistance of your parents these days as uh, due to certain reasons we cannot go physically to school. Okay. So then we are then moving this uh, candle to point B and we are going to record our observation. Then we move it to C and D like such and we are going to make a table like this. In this table we will be recording our observations. So this is um, a quite interesting practical. If you guys have the facilities and stuff don't forget you and if you are free you can always get your parents help and perform this practical. Then when you do this practical make sure you make this table. So you need to make a column with the points then you must see whether it can be screened or not screened. You must see whether it is inverted or erect. That means whether it is, you know, upside down or whether it's normal. Then you must see whether the size increases, decreases. Okay. So now, anyway, if you do this practical, this is how you can observe. It. So now, like I told um, earlier, this is sort of like... Um, a paper or a whiteboard sort of a thing used as a screen here. So here is the concave mirror. This is the concave mirror. And here is the candle. And you must place the ruler over here when you perform this activity. So now when you keep it when you keep this image at point A, this is very close to the mirror. So, it cannot be screened. And when you observe it through the mirror, it will be upright, not inverted. You can see it as it is. And you must understand that the, of the size of the image is quite considerably larger than that of the object. When you move it to location B, C and D. All these three positions, when you move it a bit far away from the mirror, you will be able to observe that the image is inverted. Inverted. So, in position B, C, D, they cannot be, that they can be screened. In position A, you can't get the image onto a screen. But B, C, D, it is quite possible, even in this activity, this picture that is shown here, the, you can get a somewhat also the image can be screened. Now, in position B, C and D, the object o is kept in these positions, then the images will be inverted. They will look as if the candle is turned upside down. Now then, in B, the image is quite larger than the object, C is quite similar in size to the object, D, the image is smaller than the object. So you can see, as the distance between the image and the mirror increases, that means more far away the candle goes from the mirror, the smaller the object gets. So now, I told you guys to do this practical at home if you can, right? So now, where do you find these mirrors? You may ask me, where do you find these mirrors? Okay guys, so now, you find these mirrors in so many places. Now, normally, people who shave their faces, you can ask your fathers if when they shave their faces normally, they use a mirror like this, a concave mirror they utilize in order to shave 
To get a proper shave, they utilize a concave mirror normally. So if you want to do this practical, you can borrow your father's shaving mirror and do this practical. So anyway, you get the concave mirror in uh, the mirrors. A concave mirror is a mirror utilized in shaving normally like you can see in this figure. It is also utilized by dentists to examine the teeth. Furthermore, it is utilized in telescope and also in solar cookers. So if you all are free, just go through the internet, the YouTube and find videos about how these uh, things operate and how they have fixed these things and how, what is the mechanism behind this. So if you all are interested, you all can just go through them and get more details. Moving on, we are going to now do the same practical, somewhat similar that is, utilizing convex mirrors. So now here, we are going to place, it's the same practical, only difference is that we are going to use a convex mirror instead of a concave mirror. So now, in as like we performed in the previous activity, you light a candle, you keep it, keep it in point A, whereas the mirror is somewhat here, very close by. Then you record your observation and try to obtain it to a screen and record your observation. Then you switch the candle to position B, C, see whether you can screen it, record your observation. Then you can tabulate it like such in the following table. So now if you perform this activity properly, you can see that in instance A, it cannot be screened. It cannot be screened. B and C, it can be screened you can obtain it to a screen. Now, in all instances, this image will be upright. It won't be inverted. As you can see, the candle is as it should be. The candle, the object is upright and so is the image. The image doesn't show any signs of being turned upside down. Okay guys, so then that's that. And we must understand that in every instance, the image will be smaller than the object. Image is smaller than the object. Object is big, image is smaller. So what can you conclude? Yes, we can conclude that the nature of the image does not change when the distance between the object and the convex mirror changes. Okay. Now, to study about these images formed by curved mirrors, we are going to do another practical. So now here, we are going to place a lighted candle close to a watch glass. So in your labs, normally in the science labs, you get these watch glasses. You can ask your school teachers who work in the labs to show it when the school starts. Then they might, you can have a clear observation on what these watch glasses are. So, you take a watch glass, okay, and place it in front of a, uh, place it, as shown in this figure, in front of a ruler. Make sure the curved surface, okay, make sure that it is in front of, the, the concave surface is placed as such. Make sure the concave surface is placed as such. Now you... Place a candle in position A, try to observe it, and try to obtain it to a screen as well. Now to do this activity, um, it's better to try it out in a dark room, somewhere where there is less light. Then this activity will be 100%, uh, not 100%, but somewhat successful, if you do it properly. Then, you can place the other candle in the other places as well. Uh, you can place, you have to have a couple of candles to do this activity also. Now, when you observe this candle's image, you can see it somewhere, right? When you just observe it, you keep another image, uh, you keep another candle where you see the image and compare the place of the other candle. Compare the size of the image and the candle. Observe the change of the image placing the candle at B and C. Then you can tabulate your observation. Okay. 
So now we can see what the observation is like such. So you just basically take a watch glass, place it like such and then put a candle at position A. Then you will get an image. First you try to screen it of course and then you will get an image. Then you keep another candle where you see the image and try to observe it. Then you keep uh, some other candles um, you know in positions B and C. Try to do the, repeat this activity and you can tabulate your observation. Now, where do you utilize these convex mirrors? Yes. So, convex mirrors are utilized specially in vehicles as side mirrors. Why do they utilize these mirrors as side mirrors? Now, you can see that the image I told you earlier in the earlier practical that the image size is smaller when you observe the image is smaller than the object so a large surface area a large rear area really can be you know seen as a small image through this mirror okay guys that's the reason they utilize it as a side mirror because the driver can view a large rear area of vehicles in the side mirrors in a smaller and upright version as images. They can observe the huge area as smaller upright images. So now we have arrived to the end of our lesson. Arrived to the end of the ninth unit. So I hope you guys enjoyed the lessons up to here. So now basically this is a basic summary of the whole lesson. So I'll just go on reading this for y'all to understand, get an idea about it again. So now we know that I told you in my first video that umbra and shadow are the same thing, and you can see them day to day in the day to day life quite oftenly. Um, you know, umbras are formed when light does not travel through opaque object. Clear and sharp umbras are formed when object is far from the light source, is kept close to the object. And then we told that smooth shining surfaces act as mirrors. Then returning light rays back to the same medium after striking on a surface is known as reflection of light. Images are formed in mirrors due to the reflection of light. Images are formed in plane mirrors are always upright, equal to the size of the object and cannot be obtained onto a screen. Parallel beams of light can be converged by a concave mirror and can be diverged by a convex mirror. The nature of images formed by concave mirror differs according to the distance between the object and the mirror. The nature of images formed by convex mirror does not differ according to the distance between the object and the mirror. Mirrors are used for various purposes in day-to-day -day life. So like such, we discuss very important things. Again, I would like to remind everyone to go through this summary even before your examinations always read the summary the minimum thing you can do at that moment is the least thing you can do is reading the summary summary is very important even now as we read it you might have seen some key points some important facts here like umbra is basically the shadow and then it's for umbra is formed when light does not travel through opaque objects okay then smooth and shining surfaces act as mirrors. Returning light rays back to the same medium after striking on a surface is called reflection. Um, then the images formed in plane mirrors are always upright, equal to the size of the object, cannot be obtained onto a screen. Then parallel beams of light, okay, they get converged by concave mirrors and diverged by convex mirrors nature of images formed and the distance of the uh, the nature of images formed by a concave mirror differs according to the distance between the object and the mirror most of these things that you see in the summary are the most important things that you should remember in this lesson so now as we have arrived to the end of this lesson i hope you guys enjoyed the lesson now here you can see that there is this exercise so, 
now that we have arrived to the exercise point of this lesson in this video i thought of not doing the exercise with you guys so instead of me doing it for you i thought of um giving you all a small task now you can see that um this is not such a long exercise okay guys so i want you guys to try to write answers for this exercise and y'all can um send it to me via whatsapp so um i have formed a group a whatsapp group for you guys of grade 7 students uh, for science so if y'all are interested um you know to get, uh, do more about this lesson to engage in quizzes to keep in touch with the syllabus so that you will have a better experience you know now since due to the covid pandemic y'all and travel restrictions and stuff you can't go to school and i'm pretty sure most of the schools um although they teach and provide y'all with stuff it's good and it's interesting i know that um but not most of the schools uh, provide y'all with um a very clear idea about how to keep in touch with the syllabus so that um you can face an exam a physical exam properly so if you guys want to you know excel in your exams now these days you all don't have physical exams but in my whatsapp group i provide you all with quizzes short notes um online zoom classes and stuff like that so if you all want you all can join that whatsapp group and those of you all who are interested you all can go through my previous videos uh, read the textbook and answer this exercise and whatsapp the answers to me uh, through that group i will be checking them correcting them and sending them back to you so then i hope you guys enjoy this video and the previous videos as well so now um as we are coming to the end as i had said earlier several times um i would like to remind you all if you all have any questions please comment it below how you all can join my whatsapp group and talk to me personally um in a much more live manner cause i do not go through the comments every single uh, you know moment and every single day like sometimes i might answer weeks later So I think it's better if you guys can join the WhatsApp group, so then I can answer all in at an instant or within a day or two. Okay, guys. So hope you guys enjoyed the lesson. Again, like my videos if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to my channel for more videos, and tell your friends about this. Okay. So then till next time, bye.